Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order. It's now uh, 5 p.m. Clerk Seekers, could you please call the roll? Anthony. Present. Foster. Good evening. Graham Hudak. Good evening. Let the record reflect the clerk Segrist is here. Slavens. Good evening. Snyderman. I am here. And Williams. Hello. Uh, we have one item on the agenda tonight. Call for a motion to uh, approve the agenda as presented. So moved. Support. Support. Those in favor of the motion, roll we'll call a vote, please, uh, Clerk Segrist. Anthony. Aye. Foster. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. Segrist, aye. Slavens. Aye. Landeman. Aye. And Williams. Aye. All right. Uh, first item on the agenda is consider renewal of a motion for continuation and amendment of a license agreement for temporary use of Canton property and authorize uh, myself to sign all documents necessary to complete the agreement. Mr. Supervisor, I move that Canton uh, authorize Supervisor Williams to sign the formal license agreement with Slows Barbecue and any other documents necessary to complete the agreement. Yeah. Thank you. Court. In terms of the background, uh, Clerk Secret's office received a request in June from Terry Perrone, Managing Director of Slow's Barbecue, requesting a permit to operate a mobile kitchen, a food truck in Canton this summer. In an effort to engage community's enthusiasm for trucks in Cherry Hill Village, as well as create awareness and exposure to the area, a temporary licensing agreement was approved by the board at the July 14, 2020 meaning allowing Slows to operate for an initial period of 30 days. The township and Slows would like to extend the license until October 5th. Uh, the initial agreement included a $250 license fee. This fee will be increased to $750, and they will only operate on Saturdays and Sunday, with the exception of Labor Day weekend, which will be Friday through Sunday. Pre-order pickup only, uh, no truck on site. All right. This pilot program has resulted in a need for the formation of a committee that will look at the viability, needs, and concerns and benefits of a food truck program ordinance in Cherry Hill, as well as the entire township. Um, at this point, uh, before, did we already read the bottle resolution or no? Yeah, the motion was read and submitted. All right, so uh, now would be, I guess, the appropriate time for public comment on this topic. Is there anybody who would like to make public comment? I see there's a, a pretty good sized number of people on the line, 34 participants total. If you want, if you want to make public comment, a good thing to do is to raise your hand. If uh, on an iPhone, how do they do that, Mike? Uh, so I see someone in Kirk has raised their hand, but uh, on an iPhone, so if you're on an iPhone, you should be able to raise a hand by looking at the, there should be an option at the bottom the bottom left, I think there is an option there. If you are on a dial-up phone, um, I'm going to Google really quickly how to do that. It is a star, there's an option for how to raise, how to Smart raise your phone. Time, I think. Was that um, if you're dialing in, I see there's one person who has dialed in. The supervisor may be correct. Um, trying to see. Here. Also, if there's anybody in the audience that would like to type in a chat who's on a computer, uh, could, could type in questions if they would like to that way. And also, I believe, Michael, we had a series of, of public comments that came in via email. We did. So, star 9, you are correct. Sorry. Star 9 is how. Okay, so if you're on an iPhone and you'd like to make a comment, if you hit star 9, that'll flag uh, the clerk that you're out there that would like to speak. Also, if you're on a computer and want to type in the chat a question, that's one way to do it. So Mike, would it be appropriate now to read some of the, the materials that have been forwarded to your office? Sure, there's a, a great deal. Uh, I can try to go through them. Maybe I can read a couple, then we can have a break and then I can read a couple or something. Or is, do they each and every one ask to be read into the formal record or were they just sent as an FYI to you and maybe you could summarize what some say if they didn't formally request? I'll give it a shot. Okay. I think so. Uh, hello. I just read in Hometown Life that the Canton Board is revisiting the continuation of the permit for Slow's Food Truck. I'm not a Canton resident, but I do live in the neighboring community of Van Buren Township. 
and frequent Canton businesses. Pre-COVID, we were regulars of Roses. I really hope the board reconsiders its decision. I was so excited when I heard the slows about Slow's opening. I went the first day, it was open, exclamation point. I got there at 345 and waited an hour and a half. While waiting, masked and distanced, I had the chance to chat with people and share stories. It was fun, exclamation point. I also noticed the Cold Stone Creamery on the corner and made plans with a friend to return, eat at the picnic tables, get dessert from Cold Stone, and then go for a walk and explore the village. I was not that familiar with the village and was interested in learning more about that little theater. Food trucks are generating so much buzz. They are fun, casual, and exciting. I really hope the board reconsiders. Thank you, Chris Turek. I assume that Chris is a resident of Van Buren Township. Dear trustees, I was disappointed to learn that the township failed to extend for an additional month the food truck operated by Slows. I thought the Slows food truck was an excellent idea and brought a lot of excitement to the area. While I certainly support local businesses and appreciate the concerns of local businesses, the food truck provided a unique opportunity for Canton residents to experience something different. I'm not sure why this exciting opportunity for both the township and the residents turned into a win-lose proposition. I'm sure the township can find a way to balance all interests. I encourage the township to reconsider its decision and extend the opportunity for slows to continue with the food truck. Kim Crouch, Canton resident. To the Canton Township Board of Trustees, we have lived in the Fox Creek subdivision since 1998 and have witnessed the tremendous growth and change that have occurred in Canton since we became part of the community. We chose Canton as our home due to the excellent schools, solid neighbors, neighborhoods, leisure services, and commercial districts. We enjoy patronizing and supporting local businesses and have welcomed the variety of restaurants and food establishments that have come to Canton. One downside to living in Canton is the lack of walkable entertainment district. While Plymouth, Northville, and Ann Arbor all offer walkable areas where one can attend an event, then walk to, to dine and browse shops, Canton does not offer this type of recreation. We were excited when Cherry Hill Village was first built. It seemed to offer walkability in a small town atmosphere while retaining some of the rural character of Canton Township. Unfortunately, the area has not sustained any commercial growth. It offers a lot of residential units without restaurants, novelty shops, or anything else that would draw us to spend time and our dollars in the area. We were anticipating a trip to the Slows Barbecue Food Truck in Cherry Hill Village. Slows is a Michigan business that has garnered nationwide attention. The food truck phenomena has taken hold in Southeast Michigan and is a good way to get people outside to enjoy delicious food in their community. Slow's perception here in Canton should have put the township trustees on notice that one, residents will visit Cherry Hill Village if there are, are enticing dining options. Two, Slow's Barbecue has an excellent reputation and people will travel for the opportunity to be able to try their cuisine. And three, food trucks are welcomed by local residents. Having Slows invest in our community would be a major asset. Um, I would draw people into the community and it would draw people in the community and aid other businesses. If it were to build in the Cherry Hill Village area, it would certainly make the area much more desirable and would draw people to the Village Theater and Arts Factory, Art Factory. There is no downside to extending Slows permit to operate a food truck in our community. The businesses that complained about being affected are not in direct competition or is this completion? And this might be a typo. Direct completion with Slows, which offers a unique dining experience. Comparing a brick and mortar restaurant to a food truck is not a fair comparison. Food truck is meant to draw people to a location where they would not normally go to, so they will patronize other businesses. For instances, if I make the trip to Slows, I might also decide to go to Canton's Farmer Market in the area. Uh, all businesses that complained have been in the township for considerable periods of time and have established clientele since they do not offer the same type of cuisine or unique outdoor experience. They should not be affected. If slows were to expand there, it would bring significant tax and business dollars to Canton. It is fair, it is fair that complaining businesses be offered an opportunity to utilize food trucks if they so desire. As constituents, we ask that you vote to extend Slow's permit to operate a food truck at your September 1 special meeting, uh, as this business enhances our community and is not in the direct competition with local restaurants. Kelly and Ralph Elizondo, Fox Creek. 
<clears throat> I am writing this email in support of food trucks in the Canton community. It seems kind of backwards and mired in the old ways of thinking that these days goods and services are tied up, up in so much brick and mortar, real estate. Sure, there's obviously and clearly a place for them, but as you're seeing from Times March and from the global pandemic we're all facing, change happens whether or not you want to. It seems silly to not invite and have more food options. If I want good local pizza, I know I can go to Palermo's. If I want to try something different, it might be good to have a food truck that's trying different things for planet, for pizza or another night that I'm not having pizza from Palermo's. It seems kind of backwards to push such services out of the community, especially for one of the growing and diverse places in Wayne County that is Canton Township. I think there's plenty of room at the table for local business people who own restaurants and stores here to coexist with food trucks and more specific specialty stores. If this were a smaller, much more homogenous community, I would see more of an argument for it, but the reality of the situation just shows that it is that it's fear of the outside that's more at play. Yes to more food trucks, yes to more choices, and yes to supporting local restaurants. Everybody wins. Trevor Tutro Anderson. Good morning. I just read the Hometown Life article about the food truck being voted out. I totally understand what the other restaurants are saying with regard to not paying taxes and utilities for a food truck. What I was proposing was to purchase property. Wait. Yeah, I don't think that should be read into the public record, Mike. I don't think this is a public comment. This oh, was, sir, this was forwarded to me from the supervisor. I think yeah, somebody, was, somebody wants to open up another business. Yeah, All right. FYI, Kristen Thomas is working with that business owner. Or maybe, a, as people are saying, uh, another investment opportunity in our community. There okay. This conversation, which is a beautiful thing. One thing at a time, though. <laughs> Hello. I wanted to take a chance to vigorously support the Slows food truck at the Cherry Hill Village location. I've been a resident for over 10 years and have noted the significant lack of draw of people and businesses to downtown Cherry Hill Village. And this is the first time I've seen any momentum. The whole area clearly received a lift, which increased the energy, vibrancy, and community of this location. In addition, this is a food provider that is renowned, renowned across the Metro Detroit, the Detroit Metro area, which has actually kept us people in town versus feeding other options outside of Canton. My group of over a dozen neighbors in Cherry Hill Village all agree that this was a good development, and many of us have been asking for something like this for years. Thanks for your consideration and hopefully things work out Tuesday. Um, uh, this is from Chai Wei Li. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, Dear uh, Clerk Segrets, my name is Asana Med and I'm a Canton resident registered voter. I write to you today in support of extending the permit and license issue to Slow's Barbecue, Mobile Food Truck, and in support of a general food truck ordinance in Canton Township. Competition is the catalyst of change in the lifeblood of our economy. Following the enactment of a food truck ordinance, the presence of food trucks in Canton will encourage the restaurants in the township to keep up with the times, improve their offerings, and become more customer oriented. It will present the residents of the township with more options for food and drink. It would also allow potential small business owners in Canton who do not have the capital to purchase a brick and mortar and storefront to try their hand at the food service industry and achieve proof of concept before seeking investment to do so. Township's initial decision to allow slows, a trial period in Cherry Hill Village was a wise one and it should be renewed. The Metro Detroit food scene, in quotes, is not limited by the boundaries of Canton. A vast majority, if not all of Canton's residents have access to a vehicle and the ability to seek out the food and drink they want, not just what is within our largely invisible borders. Should businesses like Slows be denied access to a customer base like ours, they will find other municipalities that will. And should the Canton customer base be denied access to businesses like Slows, we will find our way to those municipalities. I urge the board to reconsider their vote on not extending the permit and license and move quickly in passing a food truck ordinance to allow more innovation in our community. And that's sincerely Hassan Ahmed, JD Canada in Georgetown. 
Dear Mr. Segrist, I am writing to voice my support for a change in ordinance or whatever other procedure is required to allow food trucks to operate in Cannon Township. As a 26 year resident and food lover, I have a great appreciation for the variety of dining establishments and the longstanding role many of them have had in our community. When I want a burger or pizza, there is no place I would rather go than the Crow's Nest and I have frequently dined at others, including Rose's. I was delighted that the township started allowing the Slow's barbecue truck to set up shop on a trial basis, I was sure that it would be a welcome addition to the dining landscape in Canton. We in Canton have been missing out on the ingenuity, diversity, and vibrancy of the outstanding Southeast Michigan food truck scene, and I was looking forward to having even more great food coming to Canton soon. I was extremely disappointed when I learned the trustees had bowed to pressure from brick and mortar, in quotes, establishments, and perhaps even only a vocal minority of the dozens and dozens of restaurants competing for Canton's dining dollars. I have heard several of the arguments and seen the letter from several of these restaurants sent to the trustees. Their arguments ring hollow to me. Why should any business get, a uni get to unilaterally set the rules on who is allowed to compete? Question mark. Do they get to prevent caterers from outside of Canton coming in to cater our parties too? What about delivery from restaurants outside Canton? If you succumb to their protagonist, protectionistic logic, there is no clear rule saying that what is allowed and what isn't besides what it is to their gain. It's entirely reasonable to make sure trucks follow rules, public health, public safety, zoning, or other space use rules, et cetera, et cetera. It is not, all caps, a good argument to keep trucks out just because some of our restaurants don't like the competition. They're so worried about the competition from trucks, maybe they should get one themselves. Business models change and business environments change, and this might be a natural evolution in our post-COVID world. Finally, I want to point out that allowing trucks would actually benefit, all caps, Canton brick and mortar businesses such as Canton Brew Works and Vinter's Canton Winery. Their interests sh should be considered as well. Please feel free to share this publicly. Sincerely, Darren Ellis. These ones get smaller, thank you. Dear trustees, I was disappointed to learn that the township failed to extend, oh, that's Kim Crouch. I already read that one. Hi, Kim. Um, good afternoon. I visited Slows in Detroit and have enjoyed their barbecue a lot. In the few days that the truck was open for business in Canton, I was not able to visit um, the, same, the same, but have heard great feedback from key friends in Canton. It will be a great addition to the community, and we can have more such businesses, which gives the Cherry Hill Village a downtown feel. I've enjoyed the recent local restaurants open in Canton like LA Bistro and Authentica, and I feel Slow's food truck provides a different kind of experience and will help increase the traffic in the Cherry Hill Village area and will give our residents an opportunity to experience other businesses in that locality and expand the downtown. Thanks, Tanya Ganguly. And this is the last one. Dear Canton Board of Trustees, I would like to offer my take on the food trucks in Canton. I know that food trucks have been at the most recent Liberty Fest. I understand that it is only a few days, but I'm sure it generated revenue for the town. I lived in a new town once where trucks were charged about $1,200 a day for festivals. We Michigan municipalities want to promote small businesses and entrepreneurs, but we put obstacles in their way. Homeowners associations do not want businesses run from home, although with the pandemic, workers are working from home and teachers as well. We do not want business, uh, business persons marked business vehicles or heaven forbid their large transport trucks on their properties. We make businesses join the Chamber of Commerce and that is all that is available for them in their form of a co-op and that is paid to play. Putting obstacles in the way of food truck owners, man owners, managers, other than ordinances and hygiene OSHA rules seems petty and unwelcome to me. And welcoming to me. I have seen trucks at hospitals in neighboring towns. They would be a good fit for the large manufacturing companies in the area instead of the usual lunch trucks and for other places that could use a source of meals like call centers. I don't believe they would be that much competition for local eateries. People go to sit down restaurants because they want to sit and be served. At the moment, most of the fast food places are drive through only and the inside dining rooms are locked people aren't going to linger at the fast food places where restrooms are not available, just like they won't linger forever at walk-up establishments like food trucks. 
there is not that much competition for the slows barbecue truck. Most of the restaurants in town only serve wings or ribs. I would much rather have a food truck that is parked within or next to a park or town center than a random ice cream truck wandering about my neighborhood. Food trucks have participated at the Canton Farmer's Market. I think the board should take a second look at the idea of food trucks. I know there must be a compromise somewhere. I don't see much competition from, from the trucks in the dead of winter. There is also the idea of cross-marketing. The bakeries could be make mutually satisfying agreements with different trucks to handle the idea of dessert or coffee. I think the town has a plenty has plenty of imagination if they put their minds to it. Thank you very thank you for your time and consideration. Very truly yours, Jane Pandit, Camp Public Library Board of Trustees. The end. We've got. I'm done. Okay, good job. Well done, Michael. Um, do we have sorry. anybody that's participating online who has raised their hand or done a star nine on an iPhone that would like to speak at this time? I have two individuals. Uh, I, I will allow Rich to talk. Okay. Uh, Rich, you have been allowed to talk if you want to unmute yourself. Mute myself, okay. Uh, I really, I, I hear all, all the, the feedback, et cetera. I guess the only thing that I'm really surprised about is I also read the letter in the Observer. I read it very thoroughly. I saw the letter from the business owners. I think that they're really getting a, a very poor rap. It's not deserved. There wasn't a complaint one place in that letter. What they were looking for was a fair playing ground. They were looking for, for a level playing field. And that's simply all they asked for. I, I believe that that's something that that's viable. They can ask for that. And if you don't want to give them that, okay, then they're great. You decide accordingly. The other reason I'm here tonight, I'm, I'm not sure this is the right form, but I'm trying to find out where and who controls the tax base in Canton. There's a lot of places in Canton with this COVID. There's a, and this is just one thing to touch the bucket. But for instance, in the schools, we've got a number of schools closed, not even open. In the, the taxes for everyone that pays, that lives in Canton, there's heat, there's lights, there's facility costs for all those schools that we're being charged for. They're not opening. I'd like to know who's looking at those amounts to potentially credit it back to the people paying those taxes because those amounts are gonna be incurred. Where's that money gonna go? All right. Um, those quick- point, point of clarification. Go ahead. Yeah, just point of clarification is this time is now for public comment. Um, okay. and Rich, if you'd like to get a, uh, a serious response to any of these, to your question, um, I think it would be best uh, suited to either be addressed to my office or perhaps Diane's office, either one of us or all of us. Um, yeah, and, no, I, I can do that. I, I realize this probably isn't the, the, the right form for it, you know, et cetera. I figured I'd add that commentary. I, I think that this thing is touched upon so many facets in the community because you have so many taxpayers. You look at these businesses, I, ter I certainly understand. And what's gonna happen long-term to these businesses, they already are being affected because they're dealing based upon wishes. In this case is a governor and administration that they don't control. They have to cut the size of their business down to 50% if they can, maybe 25%, et cetera, et cetera. So they're sort of living at someone else's whim but they're paying taxes accordingly. I get the whole concept that they have to put, you know, a, a level playing field. I just totally get that. So I can address you the letter for that as well. I just think it's, there's, this is one of many, many things going on right now. And it's all because of this COVID that I think that everyone is experiencing. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, Rich, for your comments. We're gonna disable, Mr. Supervisor, I'm gonna disable that. Okay, and then we've got another hand raised. Let me um, lower that hand. We have a, a chat comment. Um, okay, from Maureen Cahallan, why so many negative thoughts about slows from other businesses? Question mark. Yeah, no, we can't, we can't respond to questions, but uh, we, uh, we agree that you know, we're hearing the same comments. Okay. All right, I see Kirk has a hand raised. I'm going to allow Kirk uh, to speak. If you want to unmute yourself. Okay, I'm sorry, I couldn't get on my computer. This is Rich Costantino. I'm with Kirk. 
Okay, maybe I can help answer that lady's question a little bit that just called on why we're a little bit upset. The reason why the restaurant owners are upset is because the sweetheart deal the board made was flawed. When the township is paying for everything, like the water, the electrical, township workers picking up the trash and dumping it, but most of all, letting them use the old schoolhouse for bathrooms, for storage, which is a historical site, which is supposed to be used for beautification, not a trailer with a propane tank and garbage pail sitting around it for seven days a week. It looks like a billboard for a billboard for advertising. Why can't they take the truck away when they're done? It's a food truck. It has wheels. They're leaving it up there the whole week. My brothers went to that school. And Sunday I drove by and they had a church group up on top, people sitting in the chairs and the kids running around the trees, little kids. It was really pleasant. But, you know, the food trucks were not, you know, we're not angry at Sloan's in any way. But the sweetheart deal that we're upset is for $250, you guys gave them four weeks. Even if you make it $500 or $750 for four weeks, I asked the board to come up with an amount or how they came up with this amount because the Canton Liberty Fest charges local restaurants that are invested in the community, pay taxes, give fundraisers for the community, and we love doing fundraisers and supporting our township. We grew up here all our lives. And I could take more pride in my police force, fire department, everybody, and the other community people in the communities. Can residents are the best supporters. When we were shut down inside, they came through drive through supported us very strong, leaving X amount of dollars to support our wage staff and all. It's a great community to be in. I invite everybody to come into Canton. But the reason why is when they charge, they charge restaurants that pay the taxes $645 to $695 for the Liberty Fest. That's if you're a restaurant owner in Canton. Now, if you're an outside vendor, which is Lowe's is, they charge you 20% of your sales for being an outside vendor. So where's the justification? Where's the equality on this? That's what I asked the board. That's why we're upset. We are the ones paying the taxes, letting them come in, make their money and leave. When we're the ones invested in our businesses and our communities, just looking for equality. A CBS Detroit article says that Slow stated they sold over $3,000 in the first two hours in Canton, the first day here, which in three times more than they normally do at a festival. Festival, okay? We I heard that the first weekend. They made $3,500, $35,000 the first weekend here. By how many people were in line, the average cost of the dish, probably not too far off. So if you got that $35,000 times it by 20%, that would give $7,000 that could have been invested in the improvement fund, not just the $250 that was in the improvement fund. Okay, we feel that we sh they should invest in the community and just not drive away. The testings of the water for the one month is more than long enough. As a restaurant owner, you should know if it's going to work or not, which is also one month longer than any other restaurant in the community got to test the waters. We have nothing against Sloan. We have nothing against Sloan. And I'll be honest with you, I would love to have them in my community. As Oh, we lost you, Rich. Rich, you're breaking up. Oh, he's still there. I just think it's a connection. Rich, if you can hear me, you were approaching your three minutes. So if you could uh, bring it to closure. You want to re reconnect, Rich, and we'll let you speak again, I guess. And we'll try to. If, um... I don't. I don't see an issue with that. This is, uh, I wish I would have started my stopwatch to see if he had completed his three minutes. But I, I think he's made his points fairly clearly. Um, is there anybody else online with a raised hand that would like to speak? I see, no, I see no, nothing in the chats and I see no other public comment. Okay. Well, out of, out of 
character for me, what I'd like to do is, is make my comments now kind of ahead of the group, um, which is normally I wait to the end, but this time I'm going to do it a little differently uh, because I, I think it's a foregone conclusion where we're headed. But the when this idea first floated, Mike, we approached your office, came up to Tristan's office of having Slows come to Canton. I thought it was an amazing, fun, neat idea. I was highly supportive and excited to get the, you know, on the board packet as quickly as possible so we could do that. And, and with that was a, a, in my eyes, a pilot program for slows to come in, see what the market is. Now, it may have been wishful thinking on my part incorrectly that slows was considering Mr. Constantino, I'm going to tell him to call back in if he wants. Richie, call back in if you like. We lost it. Okay. Call, call back in like and start over. The dude says they start over. Okay, because I just have a, 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 just one more comment, and then mine's done, but Kurt has to get in on it. Okay, well. We can, we can hear him. If, uh, yeah, right, right. Oh, no. We lost Pat. Pat, where'd you go? He must have hit something on his computer. So, okay, it looks like the supervisor has exited the meeting. Um, we'll wait two or three minutes in the absence of the supervisor. I'm supposed to take over, but let's just wait two or three minutes and we'll see what happens. Uh, I, hope I don't have a problem with that. Um, Can you text him and let him know? That, or, I wonder if he knows. Or Diane, you I am, call his office or something. Sure. We. Um, yeah. You know, I'll, I'll call him. Yeah, give him a call. And make sure you mute yourself. Um, so this is obviously um, for the twenty-eight attendees. Also, I see uh, a radio station. And couple of reporters. Uh, just please be charitable. We are new to this technology and administering elections. Wonderful. Okay. It looks like our supervisor is back. Right. Everybody, um, it was just absolutely hilarious that my computer died at exactly the moment Rich was talking to me. All right, so Rich, you had another quick point to make, and then Rich has three minutes if he would like to make a uh, public okay, comment. Kurt, Kurt's going to talk. Oh, Kurt, okay, okay right. here, I just got to finish up. I appreciate the time you guys gave me and all. Okay. Uh, okay. It's like, I mean, like I say, it's already set up for them, plenty of parking and all. And that'd be good for them because people will drive by them and see me and they'll drive by me and see them. We welcome them with open arms. We will welcome everybody to the community. Competition is, is good for you. It keeps you honest as long as you're all playing on the playing field. And we just want them playing on the same playing field by paying the taxes and you know the other stuff and um you know that's it thank you for the time and i appreciate what the township did the supervisor's office and uh the job helping us setting up the patio outside to extend our patio seating to help us with this times of uh difficulty we appreciate it and uh kirk is going to talk to you uh, on the phone he's next are you on yeah kirk can he use my phone because he can't connect to it yeah, over yeah, here? Absolutely. Uh, Kirk Moss he, is uh, yeah. partners with the Cold Stone and Maraschino. Yes. Go ahead, Kirk. Uh, thank you for your time. Real quick, I'm going to keep it short. Uh, you know, I, I, I like uh, when you guys were reading all the uh, comments from uh, the people that read in, you know, we don't disagree with them for the most part. You know, they don't see the financial side of it all, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, we want Slows there. Slows is actually next to uh, three of my businesses, and uh, we actually enjoy having them there. I went there myself a few times. I treated my staff a few times to Slows. Great food. We, like Rich said, we, we hope they decide to open a brick and mortar. There's space at the Cherry Hill Village. There's the new arts factory. Uh, and, and personally, we have nothing against food trucks going there for a long-term haul anyways, but we would like to see it done on a more fair value 
to the township compared to even 750 seems a little cheap. You know, there should be a percentage of sales, so it doesn't hurt both parties combined. So if a food truck comes in and they don't do well in sales, but they're only paying like the 50, 20 percent, then you're not getting hurt as bad from township fees. Uh, so we think a percentage of sales would be more appropriate. We think it would help with the uh, improvement fund a lot better. And, uh, we, you know, we think it'll help all the businesses in the area. Uh, we, we have no problem with slows there. We have no problem with any other food trucks there. We just want it to be able to be considered because I think at the price that you set originally, you created a very bad precedence of who can come in at what price. And that scares us in the future that you could have anyone come in there and do that. Now, you know, I, I, I think the board's intentions were and their vision was good. I just would like to see from a fiduciary responsibility to look at it from more of a standpoint of long term and uh, going future after this October uh, one that, you know, that is really concerned and more of a standpoint. Uh, I was kind of hoping to see the the I seen on the agenda that there was going to be your finance and budget person. I was kind of hoping to hear their comments and how they did their due diligence and came across the numbers that they're uh, giving you guys to make these decisions. But I'm sure we'll be able to see that in some kind of uh, documentation that's presented or something down the road. But again, our, our goal is not to stop slows. It was not to stop slows the last time. It is 100% to be able to create a proper fiduciary responsibility for them to be able to give back to the community and uh, have better agreements in place that how it's going to handle in the future. We know that this is new and everything kind of popped up quick. We don't fault everything that goes down. These are our concerns and we're just expressing them to you. Very good. Right, thank you, Kirk. Thank you. All right. Is there any additional public comment? If there's no additional public comment, we'll shift over to trustees comments. All right, seeing no additional public comment, <clears throat> I'll be more concise in my, in my language, is I was highly supportive of this when we first approved it. I was actually kind of shocked it went down last Tuesday. But the reason I was very much aligned with Steve Steinem and some of the other comments that are being made, not only by the supporters of, but also the detractors of, is guys, we need to come up with a local ordinance that we gave Greg Hohenberger that assignment to go offline and start doing it and think through what, how could we bring food trucks in? So it is a potential win-win for everybody that's involved and engaged. And then part of it, um, some of the questions that were asked by the public during the last week or so uh, forced me to go in and study, what do we do at Liberty Fest? And there is very logical, rational reason on how we arrived at the values we have. At 750, I can absolutely guarantee you, we are covering all of our incremental costs. Um, that's not, it's a non-issue for me. Uh, whether or not we were at, at 250, that's another issue. There were concerns about it being a historical village and uh, at, at the school, we, we added some uh, power box. We didn't add anything. We took two things that were on maintenance and repair lists already in terms of the electrical box and the water box. And uh, Director Hohenberger can speak to that if anybody has any additional questions on that specific issue. So, <clears throat> I, I'm going to still be a no tonight, guys, but I think we can and should, as rapidly as possible, get ready for next year, where we have a control plan where it is balanced, and everybody can see rationally how we arrived at whatever local ordinances we create, and that includes getting partition of participation in the process from the brick and mortar guys, too. So I think it can be a win-win for all, because there's no doubt about it, folks that are going down to get their sandwich from Slow's truck. When they're done, if they got kids, they're gonna walk down back to Kurt and uh, Rick's place and have an ice cream when they're done, right? Or maybe walk across the street and have a drink. So I, I think there's win-win and many of the people have commented, it's absolutely true that Cherry Hill Village has been lacking a draw. Slow's has created a draw for us. Now let's figure out how to manage that potential in the future. That's everything I wanna say. And I'll stop talking and kick it over to whoever would like to make comment or ask questions. We have Greg Goldenberger online. Uh, and I don't know any other, uh, any other directors online at this time. I promote Dean Smith to a panelist. Greg Holmberger is a panelist. And uh, Director of Police Services, Baugh, is a panelist. Um, so they're here to, answer, to speak as well. Um, as someone who requested the meeting, I'm glad to speak. 
about it. And um, Pat, I appreciated your comments uh, as well as everybody else's tonight. Um, I think we're pretty close on being on the same page here. Um, maybe nuance is a little bit different. Um, um, just a, a little background, um, just as a board, we've gotten into the habit of taking last minute additions to our meetings. Um, 99 times out of 100, maybe this being the one time, they are benign actions, but um, they're not emergency things, but they could be time sensitive. And I guess this was time sensitive last week. Um, unfortunately, because of that, I only saw the action 15 minutes before the meeting started and I was working on something else at the time um, on the agenda. And um, in general, just for the public, usually we receive these things four days ahead of the meeting. And so it made it very difficult. Usually it doesn't, but in this case it did. Um, in this case, I believe the implications of this action uh, they needed more time for reflection. And so after doing so after the meeting, I came to some additional conclusions that basically uh, necessitated the request for this meeting. Um, so last week when this was presented, I was only viewing it as a standalone item and I didn't relate it to the greater goals for Cherry Hill Village, which I think we've said many times, each of us, they're important to all of us. Um, we definitely need to put forth real effort like we're doing here with, in this initiative to stimulate the business sector of the village. Um, however, last week when we were discussing and voting, I only viewed this as a simple contract extension of a pilot. Um, but as I said last week, I'm all for, as Pat, you just said, a modern food truck ordinance and program one that's really well designed for our community. And, and that's why I pushed for uh, those things to be developed via a committee. Um, so on, upon this reflection, I decided I could get behind this extension if two things happened. Um, the first thing was a more fair fee um, to be charged to the people requesting it, slows. The 750 versus 250 is more reasonable. Um, when I thought about it, 750 per month represents $9,000 a year if it was on an annual basis. And then when you realize this is only, they're only actually operating 10 days of the month, you could actually even triple that and make it $27,000. Um, that I know it's not apples and oranges, but it, to me, it's a more fair contribution to the community. Um, and the second thing is I'm, I am mindful of what we're doing here and how it may affect other business owners here. And I love our restaurants, my wife and I and our friends go out to them, including all of the ones that wrote in um, among others. And I want them to thrive as well. So when we roll this out in production someday, that I think that impact needs to be taken into consideration if and when we do create a program. So, um, just the fact that we really don't know exactly what to charge only proves to me more that a committee is needed to flesh out and identify all the aspects of a food truck program in Canton. So having that committee listed in the RBA itself is the second thing that makes me more comfortable now to support this uh, limited extension. And in that committee, I just wanna mention a few things that I would like to see I would, see, I would like to see one of us or maybe two of us on the board uh, be a member. I'm glad to participate, I don't have to. Um, I know Diane and Michael have um, done a lot of work on this, so they're probably the best ones, um, but I, I'll, they can speak for themselves, obviously. Um, the appropriate administrators, we've already mentioned leisure services and maybe municipal services. Um, I think maybe finance and legal needs to be in there for some of the uh, fee setting, things like that. Um, I would like to see business members from both the food truck and restaurant community on it to give input um, and community members themselves. Uh, those in Cherry Hill Village, but also those in the greater community. Um, and the reason for that is because I want to look at all the possibilities for food trucks in our community. Uh, one on public land like we're discussing tonight, but also on private land like I think 
that letter sounded that Michael started reading sounded like it might be geared toward like like they've done up by Schoolcraft College or I was a big fan uh, in past years of Mark's carts in Ann Arbor where a private owner uh, bought a piece of land and put up carts and I have no idea what went into that agreement and how they were able to do it but I think it should be studied by us. Um, I think we should look at permanent versus transitory type uh, situations for food trucks and also in neighborhoods. Um, I've even before this happened, I've had friends in Plymouth tell me that there's a food truck that comes to one of the neighborhoods. Uh, in, I think it's Trailwoods or something up in Plymouth Township. Uh, I don't remember if it's once a week or once a month. What goes into that and making that happen, you know? Um, I think that could be a benefit to our community. And then of course at events like uh, Rally on Ridge or the Liberty Fest. And all through this, I think we need to look at what's reasonable and fair in terms of taxes and fee obligations. So having had those two items met for me, the tripling of the fee for the next month and the creation of the review committee, I feel I can approve this request now. As I said last time, this has been something nice for the community we can do in these uncertain times. So many things are closed now and we've had to cancel a lot. So it's nice to be able to do something for the community. Um, but when we come back next year, Pat, I agree with you. I'm looking for a program, something that um, has reviewed all the aspects and sort of sewn up all the loose ends before we move forward. So I'll be supporting the motion tonight. And that's all I have. Yeah, just to, to add to is tonight, I was actually invited to go to, I think it was Royal Point West, don't quote me on it, either Royal Point West or uh, perhaps the one right next to it, to go to their food truck. They have a food truck come into the subdivision every week. So private entities are having food trucks come to and serve parties. A subdivision HOA can certainly you know, take it on to the commons area and have a private party all day long. So that is occurring today in our community in Good some subdivisions. Thanks. Yeah. I would like to let everyone know under our existing solicitor's ordinance that uh, somebody is going to be when a food truck is going to be coming in and selling food, they should be obtaining a license through the clerk's office, just like ice cream trucks do, and just like uh, people door-to-door -door sales people do. So that is important to know. If, uh, but that's if they're selling. Um, obviously, if somebody's having like a pizza truck come to a graduation party. Uh, Private party. Yeah, they're hired by yeah. somebody to cater a party. Yeah. That's legal. So whatever, yeah, Stephen. If you're talking about in Plymouth Township, if the if the if the, the if the, 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 the truck is setting up on public streets and then selling uh, through a commercial transaction, that would be governed by our. Solicitor. This seems to be known and well known, so I'll find out more about it, Michael. But, but also, we could take committee. consideration for ours next year. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say this committee could could study it too. Yeah, that's what I mean, and give feed input into the committee. So thank you. Right. So I just. Whew. There are there are food trucks that come into Canton Township that do so that do sell and they do not follow the solicitor's ordinance. Uh, but there are also, you know, we license thirty six hundred dogs in Canton. I guarantee you, there are way more than thirty six hundred dogs in Canton Township. <laughs> you know, we only regulate what we know, and we do what we can. Additional uh, trustee comments, questions, statements. Amory, uh, unmute Amory. Oh, go ahead, Michael. Are you going? I thought I saw you raise raised your hand. Hi. Well, if you want to make a statement, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to follow up on this committee concept. Um, sure, go ahead. But if you if you've got a okay, so basically, so I'm supporting the venue. You know, after listening to things and talking to other residents and business owners, as Stephen said, the same thing. Jumping from work into a last minute um, contract to look at, I didn't. I was not able to research the entire possibility of what we had here. And I'm really um, happy about hearing the enthusiasm for the truck and the possibilities of economic development in Cherry Hill. I'm also looking forward to the, the report out study. And it definitely does not stop my going to Maraschino's every Friday night. Uh, two out of four Friday nights, we've been taking our family to Maraschino's for the all you can eat fish fry. I recommend it. It's really good and we really enjoy it. But I really think that this, um, I don't see how it took, would take away from that. And I'm glad that we tripled the fee. But I really think that residents 
have said that it's beneficial and it also brings residents as we saw the outside letter coming into our, our community and thinking about moving here and spending their money here so i think this is a good draw and i see this is the bigger picture and now that i've been able to look at it so i will be voting yes thank you and michael as you're, you're i'm, I'm going to encourage um director Hohenberger to take notes while you're speaking because we've thrown out some great ideas for the committee that we don't want to lose yeah um so i'll keep my comments relatively brief as they relate to public statements i know the media is here so uh, my inclination to want to make say something uh, jazzy and nice will, you know is there but i will avoid that i mean i voted for it the first time i voted for it the second time i will be voting for it the third time um and I was very clear about my, my logic and my, my reasoning behind it. I've, I grew up in, Canton, in the Canton community. And I've watched the Cherry Hill Village uh, trying to get off the ground for decades. And much like I've been watching the community trying to fix the roads problems for decades, I am not somebody who complains. I am not somebody who blames. And I am not somebody who says, gee, I wish somebody else would do something about this. I am somebody who literally and figuratively rolls up his sleeves and changes things. And I have a long-term plan for Cherry Hill Village that I hope fits into what this board's long-term term plan for Cherry Hill Village is. Um, you know, I, I would like to see us, um, as those rooftops come in, which they are now, and they are almost done, you know, seeing a thriving commercial district where you don't see high turnover in that commercial area. and. What did the township get out of Slows? Well, we got a bunch of free marketing, to be quite honest. Slows did for us what we could not do for ourselves, which is that it brought regional attention to a little area that some people refer to as the best kept secret of Canton Township. Um, and you can't pay for that. You know, there was some discussion about uh, people using the bathrooms. I believe it was the staff, like the cook, at slows using the bathroom. I don't believe the bathrooms were open to pedestrians or to customers. Um, so I had a, a, you know, a conversation with the treasurer who does water billing and she said, you know, I hope we don't rate that, that, that meter over there because we don't, we bill by the thousand gallons. So it would be impractical. So it's good that we're just raising the fee uh, because you know, the flush of a toilet is like five gallons, she told me, which is something I never knew. Um, which also seems like a lot, but um, an absurd thing to meter uh, one person using the bathroom <laughs> for one shift because they probably use it once, uh, depending. Um, so, um, and I think that they, the initial, we weren't trying to have them at that school. I think initially we were looking to put them over at the, uh, the fountain and they kind of ended up there by happenstance. Um, but I do agree. Um, I, I love our local businesses. I love Palermo's. I love Rose's. You know, I love Crow's Nest. I love everybody who signed that letter and I'm going to continue to love them and continue to spend my money there. And I really hope everybody who's struggling during COVID-19 makes it through, business owners and all. Um, you know, I, I really do. Uh, but um, um, that said, I, I do want to be careful because um, I saw the the thirty some odd thousand dollars of sales thrown out on the internet um, on Facebook, and I, I called Slows and I said, you know, this number of your sales is being talked about, and he laughed, and he said, I wish. That's not even close to the kind of sales we do. So I want to be very careful if we are trying to determine how much money they're actually making out there, which is a private, right? That's not our, nobody is, you know, that's not public information. It's, and most businesses do not do, say what their sales are. Um, you know, and I also wanna talk about the fact that food trucks, I think pay $90 at Liberty Fest. It was what um, had been distributed to the trustees. Restaurants do six ninety five, and I think that's for, something we call the Taste of Canton, which is a special event that we promote. Whereas the $90 for food trucks is the food truck fee. And then the vendors, which I think are smaller vendors, the pretzels, ice cream, and shaved ice, who I think do, do less in sales and sell items of less value, they are, that's 20% of revenue as opposed to the $90 fee. 
And then I, I know I was not involved in creating the fee or the first legal agreement, but I do know we reached out to other communities to determine what they, what they essentially, what their fee is for, for food trucks. And that was how we kind of came up with the initial 250. Um, so not for special events, because for Liberty Fest, you know, hundreds of thousands of people come through Liberty Fest, which is part of the reason why you can charge people more money. Um, but in Grand Rapids, it's $283 to license your food truck. In Southfield, it's $200 for a food truck license. And in Celine, it's 150 So we went with 250 which is, I think, probably about like, that's in the, in the upper quartile of that kind of range, was the initial cost. And here we're going up to, to 750 um, but we know that there's no true cost to the township, really. And we know that when it comes to the, the township's $42 million budget, uh, $250 to $750 is, is um, not statistically significant. Um, but it's meaningful in the sense that it shows that they have more skin in the game. Um, I also do want to be mindful that um, when we do talk about if we're going to allow private businesses to use public facilities, we probably don't want to use... Um, we probably don't want to communicate, like advertise for them, because that is kind of putting a thumb on the scale for a private business. And I could see, were I a business owner in this community who paid taxes and had been supporting projects for decades, I would be resentful at that. That would bother me, especially at a time when my sales are lower or I'm dealing with some severe infrastructure costs because of a pandemic that I didn't, I didn't want and I didn't ask for. So I think we do have to be mindful about how we communicate, um, you know, Slows can advertise for themselves. We probably need to be mindful about communicate about advertising for slows um, if they are going to be using that, or if anybody does in the future under any circumstances. Um, that kind of neutrality, and we don't support. You know, people call the clerk's office all the time and ask us, like, you know, do you know any reputable lawn mowing companies? And we don't we don't give out lawn mowing companies phone numbers because there's like an ethics thing there. We represent the people. I don't want to be promoting one lawn company over another lawn company. Um, so I know this is a little bit more of a gray area here, but um, it's, a, it's an interesting opportunity. And I think the reason we put them on government properties is because we don't currently have the ability to allow them to sell in the right of way. And the initial location they were looking at was on private property um, and the area wasn't zoned commercial. It was the old UAW hall at the corner of, of, of uh, Cherry Can Center. But here I am talking, and I said I wasn't going to talk long, which is a pure Michael Seavers move, so I apologize. But getting to that committee, um, if I'm going to be on a committee like that, which my name was thrown out, I would love to do that. We are in the middle of an election, and a lot of these companies, can you guys hear? Can you sound, Pat? I have to twice. I'm learning something new. They may have lost sound. Can you hear me, Pat? I'm coming back in. Give me a second. Okay. There we go. Sorry about that. Can you uh, hear me? Yeah. Note to self, when you put a cell phone on my laptop during a Zoom meeting, it kills the meeting. Why, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry about that. So I was just, I wanted to, after acknowledging that I'd spoken too long, I wanted to just briefly kind of go over this committee concept. Um, because I was not participating, I did not participate in creating this RBA. I know the fee increased. I, I imagine Stephen had asked for that and you, you acknowledged that. You also talked about creating a committee to study this, to make recommendations, to work on an ordinance. Um, I don't imagine that that, from the last ordinance change I did, it was a long process. Um, it might go through the election. So you may want Diane and me to be on that committee because we are the only two people who don't have opponents. So we're the only two people who are guaranteed to be here come November 22nd. Um, I think I think it makes sense to have a business own, business owners, like restaurant owners. It makes sense to have food truck owners. It makes sense to have community members. It makes sense to have the staff. So I think that's a great idea. I like the idea of kind of studying it um, for sure. And just for me personally, like I think finishing out the summer is cool. Um, starting next year, I would not like to see 
one specific business on township owned property. So yeah, I mean, obviously I would listen to the work that's done by the committee, but I think I would definitely not see this as a long-term model um, going forward. And it gets into the kind of what I talked about, um, you know, and, 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 and the business owners have made a fair, a fair kind of argument there. So. Um, we do circle back, Michael, with Kristen, and she can follow up on the conversation with the letter that you didn't read. Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. And I, I just got halfway through and I was like, this is probably, I think I printed this one up on accident. So, um, but that's, that's kind of, my, kind of my thoughts. So yeah, if we want to create a committee, that's cool. I'll be on the committee and I can help form it. Um, just would ask that, um, you know, maybe that work be done once this is finished, if it's, it gets extended. Um, and uh, that, you know, luckily we're entering winter months and there's not going to be an opportunity for people to set up food trucks in, in, you know, most of November, most of December, by all of December, in January, February. Okay. Uh, I'm done. Sorry. Yes, Summer, please. Thank you. Um, so um, I don't want to. Um, take too long to talk, but I do want to echo what everyone said about Cherry Hill Village. I think as a board, one of our strategic goals has always been um, livable, walkable community with connected sidewalks where people can easily access entertainment. And I think Cherry Hill Village um, is the one place in the community where that has been intended to happen um, for the last 20 years. Um, and, you know, we have the theater, we have the Village Arts Factory, we have some restaurants, but it's never really completely fulfilled the vision of what it was supposed to be. So I think one of the things that excites me about food trucks in general and slows more specifically is that it is a draw for people to Cherry Hill Village. Um, there are a lot of people who live in Canton, work in Canton, play in Canton, who never go to Cherry Hill Village because they think all of the action is on Ford Road. Um, and I'm happy to see a, a business that's able to draw people to Cherry Hill Village. And I would hope that they would wanna stick in our community. Um, I think the residents of our community spoke loud and clear with you know, the waiting in line for over an hour to get food. Um, I think you know, that tells us that there's something that we are missing in the community that they you know, very much wanna participate in and take part in. Um, I'm sensitive to the argument um, from the business owners um, about, you know, fairness and equality and making sure that all of the businesses that do business in Can Township are paying their fair share. Um, and so I think that we can come up with a fee structure that is not cost prohibitive for businesses that want to come in, but also allows us to um, do something new and exciting like a food truck. So I'm interested to see what um, the committee comes up with. Um, I know that Michael um, read off what some of the other communities charge food trucks. Um, that was good to hear. I did send an email to, um, yesterday asking for that information. So I'm glad to hear that the original fee wasn't, um, wasn't a lot lower than what other communities charge, but I think um, the $750 is probably um, fair considering that they are on public property and they are, um, you know, um, using some of the facilities and um, um, and and with um, trash disposal and things like that. Um, but yeah, that, that's basically all that I wanted to say. That you know, as a goal of this community has been to highlight the more walkable aspects of the community, and I think it would be great for our community in general to drive people to that section of town. Thank you, Diane. Please. And I won't, I'm going to, I don't want to reiterate what everybody said. Everybody's brought some great points. And, you know, this uh, food truck has really helped Cherry Hill Village. We've heard, I've heard from many residents and emails we've gotten. And so I think this is a successful start. Um, and I look forward to working on the committee uh, to try and move everything forward because we do. We want to bring life to Cherry Hill Village because it'll bring success to the whole community. So I was in support of this before and I'll continue to be. Is our, thank you, Diane. Is 
are all the trustees comfortable with um, assigning or asking Mike and Diane to represent the trustees? Are we all good with that? I see yes, Summer, yes, yes. Anne Marie, you're okay with that? John, you're okay? Yeah, okay. So yeah, Greg, you've got your trustee members, now you need to go find your other public members. Good. Do you want Kristen Thomas? I think Chris, maybe could put Kristen Thomas on that committee too. Yes, absolutely. She's economic development critical. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I think there'll be. It makes sense at this point to be you yourselves, Kristen, economic development, uh, Hohenberger for facilities, and then uh, Jade in terms of maybe a representative out of Jade's group, if there's a need for MSD support at some level. So. But I think uh, definitely Greg and Kristen for sure. And then the, to your point, there'll be financial impacts, there'll be legal impacts. So the in and out from Trumbo and uh, Cold on the legal, if we do uh, new contracts, what have you. Yeah. So brick and mortar representative, uh, food truck representative, and the gentleman who's already a supporter in the food truck industry that has been involved with Liberty Fest since forever. Um, uh, and Greg can reach out to John Lefebvre will know who that is from the, and they live in the community too. So they're doubly vested interest in food trucks and resident. And then there was one other point. So I wanted to make that it's, it's a minor detail, but getting high quality, consistent food trucks to participate in the Liberty Fest in past years was very difficult to do. And we had some pretty unstable food truck vendors that in some cases we didn't want to come back. In other cases, they came for a period of time and it just literally pulled up stakes and pulled out. Um, so I think that is finally stabilized. But that was one of the reasons why that fee got so low. But that's again, the committee will work through all those mi minute details. So I'm sorry for going on after that. I, th I think, Mike, we're at a point where we're ready for a roll call vote on this on this item. All right. Anthony? No. Foster? Aye. Um, Graham Hudak? Aye. Segrist? Aye. Slavens? Aye. Snydeman? Aye. And Williams? No. All right. Thank you for allowing me a little extra time. No problem. Typically have uh, split votes. And so the last two meetings, I've had to like take more notes for my for doing the minutes so i appreciate fact, it. it just it what just popped out guys what i thought would have popped out last time but i shouldn't be commenting right now so, yeah it's uh all right i think that concludes our formal business for the evening um chad greg hohenberger would you like to make any comments before we wrap up here before i move to trustees for final comments well, thank you okay is hohenberger oh, i'm thank good you. all right jade i think was online anything jade Anything? No, no I'm all set. Thank you, though. All right, thank you, Jay. Um, trustee, final comments, parting words? Right. Anne, please. I just wanted to um, say happy Labor Day to everybody. This is going to be an unusual Labor Day, but thank you to all, all of our laborers. So hopefully everybody has a happy Labor Day. And another thing I want to bring, I'm getting a lot of phone calls on the water billing side. Just a reminder to folks, it's summertime. It's a, it has been a hot, dry summer. Uh, so you're probably using more water than you realize watering your lawn and your garden. Um, feel free to call our office, but we are getting bombarded by phone calls. And once we remind people about um, the dry summer, how hot it's been, everybody's stuck inside with the COVID. They are using a little more water than usual. And um, in 2016 and 2012, we had really dry summers and high water bills then. So um, if you have questions, call our office, but uh, just a quick reminder that it was a hot, dry summer. And so we were using a little more water than usual. Thanks. 
and uh, Steve, uh, Michael, go ahead. Um, thank you. Uh, I just want to take this opportunity since we have representatives from the media and more participation than we typically have for our meetings. The clerk's office has been getting a lot of uh, questions about ballots. People want to come in and get their ballot now. And I have to let them know that ballots have not been printed in any state yet because the election is still, doesn't feel like it, but it's still a long way away. We'll be getting ballots towards the end of September and we're going to be mailing those ballots um, the 24th is kind of our target date. So if you are uh, voting absentee in Canton, you will probably get your ballot the first week of October. Um, and if that comes by, if it comes to pass and you have not received your ballot, then you can reach out to my office about uh, what's going on with your ballot. But that still gives you a, a long time, a, a long time before election day. But just want to give everyone a heads up that for those who have um, requested a ballot, we will be mailing them out at the end of September. If you don't remember, because many people requested them back in May, believe it or not, because we have dual applications. And some people requested them in March or earlier because of the dual application for the March presidential preference primary. Um, you can go online at mi.gov slash vote and you can check to see the status of your application. And then once we mail the ballots out, you can actually track the status of your ballot. And then once you've returned your ballot, you can check, you can track the status of your, whether or not we've received your ballot. So mi.gov slash vote will allow anybody who chooses to vote absentee to know, have I applied? Did they mail me a ballot? Did they get my ballot? Those are just kind of the three big questions. A lot of people have a lot of concern about, about voting by mail, um, but um, that is the answer and uh, there's plenty of time between now and election day. So yeah. excited too about the election. Thank you. Steve, you had raised your hand earlier. Yes, yeah, I, I just um, had a question. Um, uh, we in our community have been lucky to be able to um, uh, work this year on replacing a deteriorating fire station and I've been driving by and riding my bike by it a lot and I see that it's really progressing. It looks great and I was just wondering if we would be getting an update on it and if we have a target date for a grand opening or anything like that. The, uh, Greg actually discussed that during our 101 this week. It, he's uh, December grand opening or December opening. That's December. the target currently, December, yes, of this okay. year. Yeah, if Chris could maybe even a written update in the next update or something on how it's going and, and something like that, that would be good to know just in case we get any questions about it. But it looks really nice. Okay, we'll do that. Thanks. Yeah, Anne Marie? Hi, thanks. Yes, as Diane had said, happy Labor Day to everybody. I know there's usually a big, huge parade in Detroit that all of our working men and women and laborers go down, which we will miss this year, unfortunately. So happy Labor Day. I'm also hearing great things about the outdoor classes at the summit. So I'm really, thank you, Greg. I don't know if you can hear me, but thanks for doing that. And um, I plan on joining one of them to see how they're doing. So thanks for thinking out of the box. And I'm hearing a lot of great things. People are really looking forward to more classes. Good. Yeah, I think we've gone down the hall. We're going there. The uh, call for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Back in. We'll call vote to adjourn. Anthony. Yes. Foster. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. Seegers, aye. Slavens. Aye. Snyderman. Aye. Williams. Aye. We have unanimous consent. Our meeting has adjourned. Everybody be safe. Have a good night. <laughs>